Our learning intention today is to calculate the gradient of perpendicular lines. Our National 5 Essential Skills are to use the gradient formula, working with fractions. So let's take a look at a perpendicular line. First of all, we have this blue line. So let's work out the gradient of the line we're given. So we'll go, using the points minus 4, 0 and the point zero, 02, we can work out the gradient. So we'll get M1, the gradient of line 1, equals a half. Now if I draw a second line, line 2, perpendicular to the blue line. So the green line is a perpendicular line, it's at right angles to the blue line. So take a look, Where what's the gradient of the green line? So look at the point 6, 0 the point of intersection of those two lines. I can look at the change in the vertical and the change in the horizontal and I can work out that the gradient of line 2 is m2 equals negative 2. Now, m1 times m2 for this example is a half times minus 2 which gives me minus 1. Now I could go through lots more examples but this is always the case for two perpendicular lines. The gradients always multiply together to give me minus one. So the gradient of a perpendicular lines, so two lines at right angles to each other are said to be perpendicular. If perpendicular lines have gradients m1 and m2, then m1 times m2 must equal minus one. Conversely, if m1 times m2 does equal minus 1, then the lines must be perpendicular. A special note about gradients of perpendicular lines. Note that this rule cannot be used if the line is parallel to the x or y axis. If a line is parallel to the x axis, then the gradient equals 0 is a horizontal line and the gradient and the perpendicular line is parallel to the y-axis. It's a vertical line. It's an undefined gradient. Also, if a line is parallel to the y-axis, then it's a vertical line. And the perpendicular line is parallel to the x-axis, i.e. it's a horizontal line. It has a gradient of zero. This crops up time and time again in the exams and people are finding it tricky, so please be aware of this special note. Example 1. Given two points, point S minus 4, 5 and the point T, 1 minus 2, find the gradient of the line perpendicular to the line ST. It's always useful to draw the, the problem out so you can visualise it and just to aid problem solving. So I've got the point S minus 4, 5 and the point T, 1 minus 2 as shown in my diagram. Now just by visualising it, I can see that that has a negative gradient. So let's work out the gradient. So M of the line ST. Now you see I'm not using M1 or M2 anymore. I have to put it into the context of the question. I've been asked to find the gradient of the line ST. So the gradient of line ST is the change in y over change in x, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now this is going to give me the gradient ST equals negative 7 over 5. It's a negative gradient and that's what I was expecting. Now I want to find the gradient of a line perpendicular to the line ST. So the gradient ST times a perpendicular gradient must equal minus 1. Now when I'm working with fractions, the best way of doing that is to take my fraction, invert it and change the sign. So the gradient of the perpendicular line would be 5 over 7. Double checking, minus 7 over 5 multiplied by 5 over 7 will give me minus 1. Let's try another example. Example 2 is from a past paper. Now this is useful because in this example they've drawn a diagram to help me visualise the problems. It says a triangle ABC has vertices A, negative 3, negative 3, 
B minus 1, 1, and C, 7, negative 3. Part A of the equation is worth 3 marks. It says, show that the triangle ABC is right angled at B. What it really is asking you is that AB is perpendicular to the line BC, and you have to prove this. Step 1. Okay, let's first of all calculate the gradient of the line AB. Step 2, calculate the gradient of the line BC. Multiply them together, so calculate MAB times NBC. Now, if it equals minus 1, this means the lines are perpendicular, i.e. that is a right angle triangle. If it doesn't equal minus 1, then the lines are not perpendicular and it's not a right angle triangle. So let's have a go now at this worked example. So first of all, looking for the gradient of AB, I've got change in y over change in x equals 4 over 2, simplify to 2. I look at the diagram. Is that line AB a positive gradient? Yes, it is. So I'm just double checking, making sure my answer makes sense. Now let's look at the gradient of the line BC. It's change in y over change in x equals minus 4 over 8, simplify to negative a half. And again, looking at the diagram, I'm confident my answer is correct because that diagram is shown a line BC which has a negative gradient. Now multiplying the two gradients together, I've got the gradient of AB times the gradient of BC equals 2 times minus a half, which equals minus 1. I now have to write a statement. Because the gradient AB times the gradient BC equals minus 1, this means that the lines are perpendicular, and that means for this triangle it is right angled at B. Now try these examples on your own. Pause the video. In your notes jotter, attempt each question remembering the success criteria from your last worked example. Hopefully they weren't too hard for you. Now it's time for the answers. Question 1. The perpendicular gradient equals minus 1 over 5, minus a fifth. Question 2. The equation of the line passing through the point nine, minus 9, 2 and perpendicular to line x plus y equals 7 is the line x minus y equals negative 11. And question 3. The gradient perpendicular to the line x plus 4y equals 8 is gradient equal to 4. So how did you get on? Did you get them all correct? Now it's time to self-assess your progress and just put a little note of your RAG status on your jota. Are you red? Still need extra help. Amber, you're okay. Or green, you're good to go into some advanced problem solving. Okay, so RAG and tick underneath where you think you are with your progress. If you're still doing it red, can you tell me exactly what's holding you back? Look over my answers, see if you can work out where your mistakes are. Your mistakes with your algebra, working with negative numbers, multiplying out brackets or your fraction work. If you'd like extra work, you can also try page six, exercise 1D out of your higher maths textbook. And I'm suggesting you look at questions one, three, six, nine, or 10. And remember the answers at the back of the textbook. So what have we learned today? If perpendicular lines have gradients m1 and m2, then m1 times m2 must equal minus 1. Conversely, if m1 times m2 does equal minus 1, then the lines must be perpendicular to each other. The steps we can use for problem solving are to calculate the gradient of line 1, m1, calculate m2, calculate m1 times m2. If m1 times m2 equals minus 1, then the two lines are perpendicular. And if m1 times m2 does not equal minus 1, then the lines are not perpendicular.